Hello again. Um, with this um, second series of lecture, we will start looking at um, uh, neural networks and uh, both in artificial and biological synthesis and what they, how they are used um, in the context of artificial and robotic uh, vision system. As you can imagine, um, artificial neural networks um, take inspiration from uh, our own neural network, what's under the hood here uh, in, in our brain. Since our brain is like a computer that computes all the art vision uh, property and vision abilities that uh, uh, we want to reproduce in a robotic system. Um, so we will start today with the lecture series two. Uh, it will be basically um, based on brain, neurons, artificial neural networks, and in particular we will look into the details of artificial neural network. I would like to um, begin these lectures by reminding that a very, very good overview of artificial neural networks is given by Andrew Wang in this course, um, Machine Learning, that is currently hosted by Coursera. Links are provided also on the class website, um, as well as a more advanced course from um, Geoffrey Hinton, uh, that is probably more advanced, but uh, has a very, very good explanation. Uh, in particularly, I really liked myself the course by Andrew Wang, um, and I'm actually going to use the, some of his slides uh, right in here as well. So first of all, um, I want to remind you if um, a robot has to perceive the world, um, it might have to do some kind of a categorization. Um, with categorization as different, usually what it means is you need to categorize um, one object uh, in between a bunch of different objects. Uh, for example, this is uh, one example from Jan Lecan um, demonstration convolutional neural network, so you can train them to recognize uh, different objects, so you want to see in an image if there's a human, if there's a plane, if there's a car, or if there's an animal. Uh, if you have a single category, like a face, um, you would want a face detector. Um, face detector are usually bad examples of the kind of work that we're going to do in this course, because uh, um, face, de face detectors only detect faces. Um, when you want to detect a single object or something, a single specific thing or action or something in a, in a visual scene, many times uh, you can do it cheaply by using uh, tricks and, uh, and shortcuts. Um, but really, um, when you want to recognize all sorts of things in the image, for example, you would want to categorize every single pixel in an image, then um, you cannot afford using some of these tricks and you have to resort to a full-blown um, um, function that can understand every single thing in the image. Um, so here, even though sometimes we talk about face detector, we always talk them, talk about them in, as in the context of neural networks. So they're extendable machine that can just recognize faces as an example because we might have a data set about faces, um, but um, we always, with, with always the intent of recognizing multiple objects or things like this. Um, so a neural network, like our brain, you know, when we go around our daily day of activity, um, we often have to do some categorization. We have to we're usually looking for an object, like a pair of keys or something like this. Or maybe we're looking uh, at the scene and trying to figure out which pixel belong to the road, which you know, which areas of the image, let's say, rather than pixels. If you're talking about biological vision, um, which pixel corresponds or, you know, which part of the image corresponds to a human, which part to a road, which part to a building, which part is a window, and so forth. Um, we could also categorize um, action and things that are moving in a scene. So these are static images here, these two. Uh, in reality, a, a robot will have to uh, recognize uh, moving things mo and actions and uh, things that progress slowly in the image. So, not just a, uh, not just a simple simple image. Mm. 
So the one thing that should uh, become <coughs> apparent is the categorization is just just about object. You can, for example, um, you can categorize. The, you know, your visual system you use to categorize uh, objects. For example, if you're looking for something, you can categorize environments. So I'm inside or outside. I'm in the desert or in front of a beach, um, because you will do different actions, or a robot has to do different actions depending on the environment. Um, it will, um, you might want to analyze the, the scene to uh, categorize different paths, so that if you have to move a particular robot, and living things have to move and interact with the environment, so you might have to plan your paths or, uh, or action here. Um, you might want to look at action, and many different things. So, so all of this stuff, um, I sort of group them together into the word categorization, although that might not be the best, uh, the best grouping. But I just wanted to tell you, wanted to tell you basically that um, the purpose of uh, uh, this tool that we're going to use, this neural network, is really to ca categorize things. Um, in particular, um, when we talk about categorization, so uh, we have an image here, and. Uh, uh, we want to figure out um, if there's a human in it. You know, we want to find a human, um, like in this Jan, uh, example from Jan Lecun. Um, then what we're going to do is what, what we're going to need, if we want to do this with a computer or with any kind of system, we're going to have to have a system uh, whether, you know, in a computer is most probably going to be a system uh, mathematical or algorithmic component. You can think of it in, in different ways. The mathematical, you can think of it as a function. So uh, I, um, I select a region of this, this image, and I can keep selecting different regions, moving one by one pixel or more. For example, I select an uh, a region of this image, and then you can think of every single pixels in the image as inputs, so uh, real-time values. In fact, all these things have you know, the RGB components and uh, from 0 to 255 uh, value, for example. So what uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have, let's say, a 100 by 100 uh, image patch, uh, three values of 8 bits. So that will be your input to the function, uh, this x. And you, what you want to compute is you want to compute some kind of a function that tells you, yes, it's a human. No, it's not a human. So as you can imagine, um, it's uh, it's quite difficult to write this function as uh, you know sum of logarithmics or, or things like you know or uh, sines or uh, or polynomial expansion. It's just you can't just sit down and try to figure this out. You know what makes a human human also because or what you know what makes a bunch of pixel being representing a plane or an animal. Um, first of all, there's too many variables. Uh, in 100 by 100, you have 10,000 input variables, each one with a free value, so it's like um, 30,000, huge amount of inputs. Um, and eventually, you want to have maybe, uh, let's say you're categorizing four things, so you just want to have two bits then of information coming out. So uh, imagine the kind of compression that you need, uh, that this function needs to be able to do. Um, so think of it like this, you, um, if you want to program a robot to do certain things, if you want to replicate human vision, you're not going to be able to just write equations for it. Um, you're going to have to use some, um, some tools, like a neural network, for example, <coughs> machine learning tools, that are able to um, grab examples of a bunch of data um, in a data set. So for example, let's say I have many images of a plane and um, and they're going to have to learn some parameters. They're going to have to, uh, this, uh, this neural network will have to represent a function with multiple output. For example, in this case, this function will have four outputs based on the input. You know, it could be um, a human or a plane or a car or an animal and we'll see more about it later or it could be just a single value depending on the value of, uh, of the output you, you could have different categories but basically what this neural network is going to do is is going to uh, categorize uh, 
get a lot of pixels, a bunch of pixels, use them as an input, and generate some kind of a function approximation that can tell you what's um, inside uh, this uh, batch of images. Um, so, since we're um, in this course, we're talking mostly about um, artificial um, bio-inspired systems. Um, we have to take a look at how our brain works. Um, I show here an example of the whole brain, um, but really, what what this is is um, if you think about it, the brain is like uh, a computing machine. So it's a uh, it's a system of functions that allow you to do certain things. So um, if you're looking at the visual cortex, so you know there might be this area down here. Uh, in or this area here, occipital lobe vision. What it is is, is um, an ensemble of neurons. Many of you know this already. The brain is composed by a lot of neurons, and uh, these neurons together basically <coughs> do um, what I exemplified before. So this entire uh, group of neurons will look at a certain, pet, you know, area, um, a, a certain. Uh, um, portion of your visual field and they will be able to tell they will have implement some kind of a function that will say yeah there's a plane there or no there's no plane um, and the brain is not just vision there's a lot of other things but the right, right now we're not gonna worry about that um, so since the brain is a collection of neurons um, uh, organized in a network so we might want to take a look at what a neuron is um, many of you might have uh, um, studied this in biology, in biology in courses um, during your early education. Basically, what a neuron is, um, is um, a tiny computing machine. So you can think of it as a, as a small uh, function that uh, takes uh, inputs from other neurons. Um, other neurons have um, axons that terminate into synapses so they um, they generate um, biochemical currents into the neurons that get, get integrated into some kind of a voltage so what that means is that um, a neuron has many inputs receives a lot of inputs and their value um, generate some kind of internal representation uh, and if that in internal value is higher than a certain voltage, then um, a pulse is generated and sent to other neurons. So you know, these are presynaptic neurons and these are postsynaptic neurons, for example. And there's multiple layers of this neural network. So in biological system, um, all these values, uh, these, uh, um, these values here are um, um, pulses of activation called uh, um, um, the pulses of ac activation called neural impu impulses or spikes and they're discrete events that basically uh, transfer information from a presynaptic neuron into this neuron and then this neuron can compute you know can add this information together uh, and, uh, and then produce um, a function of it of these values. Um, what this function um, is is mostly due to uh, the number of synapses, uh, meaning the weight of the connections between one neuron and the next, uh, basically. Um, and so this is just a simple um, overview on, on what um, real neurons do. So in the past, researchers I thought that it might be uh, quite interesting to to try to replicate neural networks in uh, um, in artificial systems. So um, they created a, a simplified artificial version of this, and that's what we're going to mostly use in this class. Um, by the way, just a comment: um, a lot of researchers study neurons on the biological side of neurons, and also they do computational uh, neuroscience models of the neuron. How it pro how neurons communicate, how they propagate, and they include the many variables, biological variables like synapses and neurotransmitters and all sorts of things. Um, 
and this uh, generally complicates the model of a single neuron. Um, I don't personally don't think that the model of a single neuron should be that complicated if we want to really try to understand uh, the brain in the simple simplest functions. Um, so, you know, likewise with the uh, other computer scientists and previous uh, artificial intelligence um, researchers believe that a simple model can can capture that can capture basically the essence of a neuron will be enough to um, create a very large machines with very large number of neurons that uh, will allow us to uh, really explore um, capabilities of um, artificial neural networks. So what is really this uh, si very simplified model? I will just say this um, um, before I, I, I stop this portion of the lectures. Basically, this uh, the simplified model of this neuron uh, has uh, multiple inputs and inputs, um, and multiplies this input by some kind of weights, so sort of simplifies synaptic connection and synaptic strength. Um, what we do inside the neuron then is we add together all these inputs multiplied by the weight into an internal variable x and then um, you know depending on um, we, we will use a nonlinear function so for example this could be a binary function that will say um, if uh, x is above uh, zero, then uh, the output is one, or if x is less than zero, then the output is is uh, z is minus one, or something like that. We'll get into more details in a second. 